already know what time it is. It is time for another edition of that Raw Talk podcast. Well, we talking that talk, man, and this right here is season two, episode six. We got my guy, I'm sorry, episode seven. We got my guy, the hilarious Julio Hennessy, the comedian. He gonna be pulling up today. So y'all make sure y'all stick around because, man, we going to definitely have a great time. But, hey, if you have not, make sure you go to YouTube and check out my other interviews. Just go to YouTube, look up Roth Talk Podcast, and uh, you know what I'm saying? You're going to be able to check out all the uh, previous YouTubes and videos that I had. What up, nephew? Julio, do a request. Come on stage, my guy. Come up on the live. Uh, but yeah, go over to YouTube and look up Roth Talk Podcast, man. I got interviews with the co-creator of Def Comedy Jam, Mr. Bob Sumner, as well as I got multi-platinum engineer, uh, Erko. Man, I got pro- platinum producers on there, man. So make sure you pull up to the Roth Talk Podcast or we're going to talk that talk. So we're going to get this thing cranked. Podcast. Uh, and we going to get it in. We about to get it in. So y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. Stick around. I think my guy about to pull up. Hello. What's man. up? What up, brother? What up, my guy? Can, can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I got you. I got you. Sometimes the little earbuds want to act up. So I got to make sure I'm good today. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Sir, man, man. Well, let me go ahead and welcome everybody to another edition of the rock talk podcast where we talk that talk and today i got the very funny hilarious comedian julio hennessy my guy so we go man we got a lot to talk about julio how you doing today though my guy hey man hey bless bro hey thankful to be a muslim living as my old folks would say another day baby you know what i'm saying so i don't care what i quit to i'm happy i was able to go to it you know Hello. What I mean? Hello, yeah. man. Now, don't start preaching up here. Hold on. Hey, don't start hey preaching. man. We hey, well, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Well, man. Yes, sir. Well, I always like to start my podcast off about who is Julio Hennessy, man. Just give a, uh, the people a quick breakdown about who you are, where you're from, and all that good stuff, my guy. Uh, I'm a comedian Julio Hennessy, held out of North Carolina, representing Charlotte, living in the Charlotte area. I mean, I've been in this game about seven years now doing my thing, man. Still fresh, still new, but I'm making some motion, baby. So I hope the waves catch your front porch, but don't close the door. Open up and get wet, baby. That's what I say, catch it. <laughs> 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 man, as y'all see my guy cutting up already, man, but we about, I already know we're going to be laughing this whole podcast. So hopefully y'all, man, got y'all tissues, going to be crying. All that other good stuff, man. But Julio, yeah, man, man I, let, let's just take it all the way back to the beginning, my guy. Let's talk about, you know what I mean, young little young Julio, you know what I mean, at a young age. Now, were you always one of them funny kids, like, like making jokes, or were you kind of like, you know, a quiet kid? Kind of tell us about a, a young Julio. No, a, a, lot of, a lot of my classmates, man, people from school, they say, bro, you know, what you're doing right now, I really, I really can't say I, I – you know, you wouldn't have been doing that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was kind of like the one that was, uh, I mean, especially in doing sports activities, football practices, and wrestling practices, whatever. It just, you know, it, it, it wasn't like I, it just happened, bro. I like, I like like to have fun. And, yeah, I definitely was uh, the crazy one around. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, it was true. So everybody say, yeah, you, you, you know, what you're doing is what you've been doing. I say, well, you know, there it is. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's it been with me for a long time, bro. All right. You know. Hey, well, let me ask you this, Julia. Now, did you get like class clown, or did you get kicked out of class? Do you got tell me? Do you know any like quick stories about you? Know I, mean, what I mean, like now I'm like, talking about elementary school. Let's talk. We talking about young, young now. Oh, now did elementary you cutting school. Up back then? Yeah, let's talk about elementary, elementary school. school. Well, elementary school. They said they said I had. Uh, they put me on Ritalin, so I was a Ritalin kid coming up. So I was like when uh, when like when when, when Ken, what you say what you think about. Running, you know what I'm saying? They had me on really, uh, but when I wasn't on really, I was definitely off the wall, bro. Then, you know, it was a language barrier early in school because my first language was Spanish. Mm. So that's another that's long story. My daddy and mama can't get from my daddy. So, yeah, I had to learn English and, 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 and then not be uh, all off the damn wall. So it wasn't, it wasn't a good combination, bro. Yeah, even in grade school, I was I was out there, but I was lovable. I was, a, you know, 
I was a cute one. That's why I had curly <laughs> hair and shit. They that that shit slide. You know, you the only light skinned nigga in the hood back in the eighties, early you know, early eighties. I was born seventy eight. Yeah, you know, yeah, they gonna let you slide. We got good hair. <laughs> And his daddy swim here, so he go. We gonna let him. <laughs> so well, well, let's talk about this Spanish tip. Let's yeah. talk about. So, what's your nationality for the people out there? Oh, so my, my father, you know, uh, I'm half Cuban, man, half black. So, my, like I said, my daddy's Cuban, uh, born in Cuba. Uh, you know, what I'm saying I, I'm one of the first generations of me being born in America. I, 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 and we have my daddy them side bloodline. So yeah, my daddy swam here, my G. Yep, so did that. Swam right back after I was born. He ain't, he ain't stick around long enough. Nigga. Rosetta Stone wasn't really mama them, you know. Yeah, so yeah. Man. Yeah. Now, did, so your dad, did your dad, hold on, Tom, oh my God. So your dad, your dad spoke English, though, because oh, yeah, he, he got, so, your, he got so, with your mom. And, yeah, the military. Like, you know they got, what I mean? Okay, okay. Mom, that's why my specials called the law on two because my mom was a, was, a, was a police officer in the military and a cop out of the military. My dad was in Navy, they met in the military. So yeah, you know what I'm saying? So after that, yeah. And, and he was Navy. Good swimmer. Should be Navy anyway. But anyway, uh, <laughs> passed all them swim tests. But uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? They met in the military and uh, yeah, then you know, came amongst little Julio and uh, shit. They don't, it was just only me, Julio. Big Julio left the house. So it was just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, I love it though. Love don't, it. don't cut up, y'all. Hey, my guy. Don't I, I, I embrace it. Oh, no. I embrace it though. I love it, man. You know, I love every minute of it. <laughs> all right. Well, let, let's talk about. All right. So you said you was on the red lane. You had to calm down. Yeah. So let let let. All right, so now were you watching any stand up as a kid? Were you around anybody? You know, any stand up? Um, Did you watch TV? Man, so my memory of that when I was young, young with comedy. Was my mama had that big, big giant, uh, like big wooden ass thing that had the TV, the radio, the record player, and the eight track. You know what I'm saying? It was all in one. And yes, it was sir. in my room, bro. And so I was messing around and reading stuff. And I read, uh, there was a, I read a, uh, a damn eight track that said Red Fox, Richard Pryor, and um, Red Fox, Richard Pryor, and uh, Dolomite. So, bro, I put the headphones in. I'm listening to this shit. You know how it is, bro. You're supposed to be asleep. You feel me? I'm in there giggling. All of a sudden, the door bust open, and she whooped my ass because she know I was listening to this nasty-ass comedy, bro. I would walk around talking about way, way down Jungle Deep. I was doing a whole little skit. So, you know what I'm saying? I was just, you know, early on. But then as, as she let me watch Raw. Why the hell mm. mama let me watch Raw when I was coming up? So she let me watch the shit, but I didn't realize later on in life, you know, that I'd be taking this road. You know what I'm saying? But I've been you know, watching it and, you know, laughing and, you know, emulating, you know, all my life, though. So, yeah. It's, nah, it's that's dope. crazy. Hold on, man. Your mama let you watch Raw. Well, I mean, and she, my, Eddie my was Raw on that. Fuck this in, bro. My mama had HBO. You know, my mama had a good job. So we had cable. We, 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 had, we, we, we had the big screen to actually had cable to it. Not the ones you had to put the antenna in that motherfucker. You didn't put the VCR in. We actually had, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I had a computer with a floppy disk. I'm just saying, I, I was, you know, you was really doing it. You was doing it. Doing it. it. So, yeah, you know, so I got to watch, uh, I got to watch Raw, bro. Yeah, I remember that shit in, in the red leather, bro. That was a hell of a, uh, yeah, man, yeah. classic. Yeah, my mom, like, what classic shit. Never be, yeah, can't be duplicated on that one, bro. Nah, you ain't telling no lies on that. Okay, so that's young Julio with the headphones listening in getting that comedy into your spirit so then let's talk about all right let's transition let's talk about middle school like was because you know middle school for a lot of people that was some rough times especially back in the day you know what i mean yeah, like, they don't know the yeah. Difference. you know what i mean bullying was different back in the yeah, day see, compared to right see, now. My, my middle school you're you gonna have me crying on here because i had a very emotional middle school oh so man my don't middle school that, was man. between different different uh cities and, and shit like i started in north carolina you know, then we, then we ended up going to Chicago when I was like going in middle school. So I left mm. the South as a child, and we in middle school in Chicago now. And, and this time, so bro, yeah. So I went through the yeah the bullying. Let's, get, talk, let's talk about that real quick. Hey, I know. Let's talk about Chicago. 
You better not feel me heavy. <laughs> let's get let's get one of our emotional support people on the line right now. You to, you, we will briefly we will briefly skim that skim that. Button. Yeah, we ain't gotta go. We're not gonna you. melt that. Yeah, we're not gonna melt that whole damn <laughs> block of butter, buddy. You gonna have me over here emotional and shit. That's not gonna nah, happen. Nah, let's not talk yeah, about that. I'm just saying how more it is. Is me and shit. <laughs> Let's talk I don't about know how was the transition Tell. from New Bro, from Bar- from down south Bro. to Chicago. That's a big yeah. di- that's a big difference. Bro, I got. I'm used to I'm used to running around the woods, chasing crawfish, wearing all kinds of shit to go into nut but fucking streets, uh alleyways, and niggas telling me you can't wear certain colors because you mm. get beat up. Bro, that shit was a hell of a rude awakening. I, my first, my first week on the block, I'm wearing a Carolina, you know, Carolina Tar Heels, whole little suit, right? Whole little suit, suit, bro. I mean, that motherfucker, bro, lay down that motherfucker, right? They, they, they say, hey, where you from? I'm like, North Carolina? How about <laughs> she? I don't know. You got to take that the fuck off. I'm like, why you got to take it off? It was a whole, like, seven niggas. They all dressed in red and black. You were in a vice lord neighborhood. I'm like, what the vice lord is? A motherfucking uh, part of Camelot, nigga? You know what I'm saying? I ain't know what that- <laughs> And they, 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 it's like, nah, they let me know real politely, go change clothes. Get, I'll get shot up. I went and changed my clothes. I mm. said, this, I don't want to be here no more. I can't even wear my Carolina Tar Heels. Mm. <laughs> I can't wear my right Tar Heels. I want to go back to the South, Mom. I can't wear my Tar Heels. You guys shot that one, bro. I can't, I can't wear my... I had a Ramesses. I had a whole big, had a nice ass. had a whole Ramesses right here. She, bro. That she was brand Chill, new, bro. Man. I don't fight, bro. We, we, we got to get through me. this interview. Ahead, Hold on. Okay. We got to get through this interview. Don't be having me dying laughing over here. Oh, my like Carolina Tar Heels. Yeah. And I already know how that, I know that feeling, goddamn. I can't even run my shit around. I can't, I can't run my fucking shit around here, bro. I can't even run my oh, shit in the freezer. Bro, I, oh, man. I was wearing purple, nigga. I was wearing green. I was, I think I was, I was all kind of colors that oh, no man. other gang had, nigga. I was fuchsia, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. All right, so how long were you? All right, how, we're going to skip past Chicago. So how long were you in Chicago? That's just sounds, I'm sad for you, my guy. Right, so right, how bro. long were you in Chicago, and did, did you go back to North yeah, Carolina we, after that? We, back, we were there from, from like, from, uh, was it sixth grade until my uh, sophomore year of high school. Then we came back down. Okay. So okay, them years okay. was okay. quick, but I was there doing the first three feet. That was the most epic oh, time in Chicago, bro. I'm about to say that was three, lit, man. First three feet. First three feet, first three feet we did. We did shit. You feel me? Uh, we anyway. So yeah, that time frame, I came back to North Carolina. I was happy to be in the South again. I was running through woods again, chasing crawdads in a sophomore high school. I became a kid again. I got to. I got to wear, look at the rematorial stuff here. You know what I'm saying? It was awesome. <laughs> nah, so, that's yeah. what's up. So, yeah, were you, yeah, so let's talk about where you, so during that time, were you still making jokes? Were you a class clown? Nah, you still bro. Like I mean, Chicago was survival for me, bro. I'm keeping okay. with it. That was, okay. I was on okay. some other shit. Uh, I was uh, in, in, in and out of a lot of trouble at that time, bro. I'm keeping with it. I wasn't, the, I wasn't the best, wasn't the worst. But yeah, Chicago was in survival mode. When I got back to, when I got back to North Carolina, that's when I got to really, you know, I started doing my sports and school and music. I was doing music in Chicago, but uh, I, did, I, I became more, more hardcore back, you know, came back down south. So, yeah, hey, bro, this Chicago was just make it, bro. Make it and, and, and fuck the rest of the shit. Keep your head on the swivel. That's, that's what my life was about. That's a fact. All right, all right. All right. Well, we're going to skip past that part. So, <laughs> let's, uh, let's bring it back to North Carolina sophomore year. You back on the scene. Yeah. Now, did you bring that Chicago energy back to the South? Like, yo, I'm, I just came from Chirac. Y'all ain't hitting on that. I mean, no, I, was, you did, no, you I came back, to be the, back. I mean, I know I was changed, but I came back happy to be back down South. I ain't come on there. I mean, I still was a, I think I cut up the school my first, you know, whatever, and, and had a little problems, you know, with the school. But I, I fixed that shit for my junior senior. I graduated, you know, had my shit together, playing all my little sports and killing that shit, whatever. You know, but it, I was, you know, right. so coming back, I ain't bring that. Oh, cause I didn't have to, bro. I had to worry about getting shot up. We still we had corner stores and and, and, and niggas still walking around giving out candy and trick or treat. I was dollar back in peace. I was happy, <laughs> motherfucker. I was shit frolicking and shit around <laughs> when I came back home. Fuck out of here. I, yeah, what none of that? Yeah, so 
It just, you know, they they thought I had that beef on me in school. So they always want to, if I did anything wrong, he's on that, you know. Yeah, he's on that Chicago yeah. stuff. Yeah, that, no, <laughs> I, was, I was happy to come back down south. I was like, shit, let's go. I'm ready to go back. No, nah. oh man, that's funny, man. That's funny. All right, now let's talk about now. Did you? I know you say you did sports. Did you ever do any drama class, acting, nope. anything like that while you was in high school? No, I didn't do did it. Did that, bro? I was, I was a music band, you know, jazz band, mm. shit like that, and football, wrestling, track, and baseball. I, was, I did four, four sports. Yeah. Nah, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, well let's. All right, let's. So high school after high, now while you was in high school, did you have uh, idea of what you wanted to do because I like to ask that question of people. Yeah, I, I, this, this I, 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 I was that motherfucker on the field and on and on the wrestling mat. But, you know, I, I I was too short, too fat, and uh, you know I was a beast though, but just not enough. But, you know, so then I went to school college for computer science, and I was like, that I'm not. This is not for me. I'm not that kind of. I'm witty, but I ain't that smart. Smart. So then I came back, and I always I came back home and. And I've been mechanically inclined my whole life, so I, I had that, I had that sort of case before I left for college from high school. So I came back, turned wrenches, bro, and I'm a, I'm a professional, full, you know, master level diesel technician. Mm. Hello, hello, that's what's up, my guy. That's what's up. Yeah. So after school, mm -hmm. you say, hey man, the football dream didn't work. No, you got to get out here and get it. So you went to college, but you did you you went what college did you go to? I went to a small. Uh, college down in Fayetteville, Methodist, a little Vision 3, small, supposed to be a Christian college, but it wasn't, but we used to smoke, smoke everything. And, and it wasn't no Christian college, man. We was, we was, we was sinning. But, uh, you know, just, <laughs> we were sinning out there, I'm just saying. But other yeah. Days, yeah, you know, yeah. Those Christian yeah, what, nah, colleges be definitely yeah. sinning, my guy. I can definitely yeah, tell yeah, you yeah. that. A lot of preacher's daughters in there. Hello. Don't want, don't want to ask. Oh, Hello. Circle. <laughs> you, you man, listen, they and hey, listen, they going through some things up there. Man. Anyway, we're not gonna go down that road. And God bless you. Go. All right, so you went to college. You, so you went, you jumped into the automat, um, the automotive uh, industry. Were yeah. you? Were, did you have this in your mind that you want to do comedy, nah, or was I, you never? Like, this was never. So uh, let me go fast forward because it's gonna take a long time to get there. Let me go to yeah. So. Uh, seven years ago, I say because I think this year seven years of comedy. Uh, before then, I was I was living in Charlotte. I'm in Charlotte at the time. Uh, I I I was doing parody rap. I don't even hear heard a parody rap like the Weird Al. Oh yeah, yeah. Like yeah, that. yeah. I would do a parody. I would do a parody rap, bro. And uh, so um, uh, and so what I did was um, I was at an open mic for rappers and shit, mm. and I met a comedian. Homeboy cousin Clyde, that's told me I want you to open next week, and I've been rocking ever since, bro. Mm. Okay. Now, did anybody tell you to do that, or you just felt like when when the moment happened, you like, yo, I think this. Yeah, my moment had to do so. I said, I'm gonna try it out. I went to a mic man, and first couple open mics was rough. I kept around, kept working, kept going, kept grinding, kept grinding, kept hitting mics, kept working on craft, and find out who I want to be, how I want to be, finding myself. Never stopping. Whether people encouraged me or fuck with me or not, I kept pushing. I kept working on it, you know. And and, and you know, and we look at seven, you know, seven years. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm at a point where man, I, I, I see the turn. I'm, I'm grateful because I've accomplished some great things, but there's still so much more to be accomplished. So just stay humble and grind and keep that same look, outlook, and drive, and you will continue to succeed. That's a fact. That's a fact. All right. Well, let's talk about some of your influences when you talk about. This comedy game. Let's talk about your. If you had to pick three comedians that kind of influence you to do what you do, um, who who would be those three, and why would you pick those three? And uh, that's a deep one, bro. Because I'm a. I have a mixture of comedy. Like people always put comedy in like ethnic backgrounds, or you know the color of the comedian. You know, I, I always just heard the funny and the styles are funny. So, um, Red Fox is the one I always had me with. I just his, his pure raw shit. Uh, you know, uh, I, I'm not gonna lie. A lot of me, a lot of people say I come down when I'm ranting. I sound like you know the great Bernie Mac. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I have watched heard a lot of his stand up, but but the asshole in me, the one that will punch a punch a hole through your chest, 
<laughs> listen to a lot of Andrew Dice Clay as mm. well when I was fucking around. Mm. Yeah, I know, I know, I know everybody. He was racist, so what? The world's racist, and that shit's fucking hilarious. You gotta learn how to take that shit and not be a bitch about it and throw it back in somebody's face. So yeah, a lot, a lot of that fucking that kind of Dice Clay, Bernie, mm -hmm. and fucking Red Fox, because mm -hmm. that you know, and then uh, so that's if you know. When I, when I say delivery style, because I got some asshole. I wrote when I get on you. It's, it's, I'm coming for you. Like, you know, you know, you don't want, want to fight me. Fuck that. We're going to fight. You're not going to. This roast turned to a fight. I'm not going to. Yeah, we're going to fight. That's why I don't like roast. <laughs> well, that, well, that's a pretty uh, unique uh, group you got there. You got Red Fox. You got Andrew Dice Clay. You got Bernie Mac. So those are three different spectrums. Of funny, so that means your your comedy style. So, would you consider your comedy style to be controversial, or would you consider your comedy style to be more like a reality type of comedy? Um, what kind of uh, what kind of style do you say you have? I just call I call myself, you know, my, my, I'm a storyteller, man. I, I tell you things about having my life. I got I hit a few one liners here and there, but I call my really. I feel like I'm educated ignorance <laughs> is what I bring. You know, it's like it's. Because, then again, you got to understand, some people want to hear somebody just talk shit all day and really don't want anything, you know, such. They just want to hear that style. Some people want to have some wit to it. They want to be they want to be able to think about what you're saying and, and catch up to you. So it's all about you reading the room and what you're working with. But, I, I, you know, I'm happy that I can, you know, bring forth those things without my set. I can pretty much hit any any room or anywhere, you know, and get some, you know, do a, I say now at a consistent point, do a great job of, of doing what I do and bringing left. You know what I mean? No, no. That's what's up, man. Now, what would you say is the hardest thing about being a comedian? Because, you know, I've recently just started to get onto this comedic journey as well. I, I wouldn't call myself a comedian yet, but um, you know what I mean? Because I feel like... You got a mic, hit a stage, you you know, you work, you got some you do comedian, bro. It's, yeah. it's level to it. It's all about... I tell people as 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 my own as I, I would never lock I would never knock anybody's level of interest into the game of comedy. Some people aspire to be a great, well known, you know, saying rock in the nation. Some people just want to be able to have a release because it makes them feel good. You never knock someone's level of interest. But what I do, if you are, if you want to be that one, if you want to be the next great, then put yourself around other people that want to be that same thing. Hello. Don't hang around the ones that's cool with us being a great local talent. The ones who just want to, who want to, and, I, and I'm not knocking anyone when I say this. Just saying what everybody has a choice of what they want to be. If you want to be the funniest motherfucker within 25 miles, that's your choice. I ain't knocking you. But I want to be the funniest motherfucker across this land and be known for that shit. Hello. Now, if it don't happen, then let's say, well, let's say I don't get national known, but I'm still making five, making a high, high six, you know, Five, six figures a year. Upper fives, you know, six figures a year doing this comedy. But I ain't well known. I'm happy because I'm taking care of my family using the gift that God gave me to provide, Hello. bro. Hello. You know what I'm saying? People get, people get, people get, you know, what you're destined for confused with fame, bro. You know what I'm mm. saying? It's a gift. This is a gift I have. I might not, this this might be my gift that God gave me to provide for my family, and I might not get famous off of it, but I'm going to be able to take care of my family doing what God gave me, doing using this gift. That's if I love. feed this gift, if I embrace this gift, if, if I believe in the gift I have. It was not meant for fame, buddy. Yeah. If you, you taste the fame, then, man, you're going to have a long, long taste in your life. If you taste an abundance and growth and able to take your gift and provide, bro, forget working a 40, 50 hour week job. Wake up and do your gift, and it provides for you abundantly. I don't care what level of fame you win it. Hello, and that's Hello. what, and, and that's what we lose our view at, bro. So that's my view on the whole thing, bro. I'm, I'm, bro, let me, let me get a little more consistent on the financial income with this comedy shit. I'll be able to stop working, but I gotta have the, I gotta have it right though. I just can't walk away. Oh, you can do it. And I got, I'm forty something years old, forty five. I ain't got time to be sitting here waiting on motherfucking uh, hope in the real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> shit, yes, sir. Hello. You fuck around, be bad. You fuck around, lose your house. You child support locked in jail. I got, I got, I got bills. I just can't quit my job. And just you gotta have faith, nigga. For I gotta have finance because there's some shit that I can't worry about <laughs> not coming forth. But I got to have finance, and I'm gonna work this faith. Okay, I'm gonna work this faith, but I gotta have finances too. So, amen, amen, hallelujah. You got to have wisdom. <laughs> you got to have wisdom, my guy. That's what the good book says. Yeah, you I'm going to chase this, but I ain't going to risk it all. <laughs> 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 YOLO. Shit.
They say YOLO though, my guy. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> What you risk it doesn't mean what I would risk, sir. Hello. No, that's what it is. But anyway, but nah, you know, everybody got levels, man. There's levels to it. I respect everyone's perspective level they want to be at. I know what, where I want to be and what I aspire to be. So I try to surround myself with those that have that same desire to be, uh, understand the aspect. Other than that, man, keep it rocking. Okay, you know? okay. Hey, well, let me ask you this question. How do you, uh, you know, because people talk about, like, writing jokes and, you know, are you funny and stuff? Like, what is your process when you are getting into the writing point? Do you, like, do you sit down and write? Do you, like, ha have something pop in your head? And you're like, oh, I might use this as a joke. So what's kind of your uh, your style of, you know, preparing for shows and different things like that? Um, Well, I use my iPhone now for notes. I, I, I find myself having witty thoughts or a phrase. And if I don't, be, if I don't voice record it or write it down, you're not going to remember it 10 minutes when you're trying to come back to it. So now I'm just fast as writing these ideas, these quick, these quick things I see, and I come back to it, and I read it, and I expand upon it. And like I say, I, I, I might like uh, I get a lot of paint sips, bro. I love them, and they let me come work new material. They said, "Man, we come work your new shit. Anything you want to work out, we know you just funny. Just come, just come do your thing, you know." And and, and so there's times, bro, I go on some of these things. I I just did one just now for a guy on live, was leaving one, uh, you know crowded place and, and I was bringing some new shit and some of them I'm still working out. So they, mm -hmm. they, they, didn't, they didn't hit as crisp. You know, this is me being as with myself. So I know, hey, work on these points and come back again. You know, it's, it, that's the sharpening stone. You feel me? So that's that's how I look at it, bro. I don't know why I just got lost too, so I just went play. Go ahead. Bring, bring <laughs> nah, back, Captain. No, nah, no, nah, you're good. Because, I mean, I, I, I sit there and I think about like how, oh, people, how do people, writing. Like, yeah. 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 How yeah. did, how do y'all like, man, what made a person think about that? There, and then there's some great kind of way. There's some great, great writers, bro. There's some great writers. There's some that have great performances. It's levels of comedy I never really knew until I started getting involved in the game. There's some motherfuckers that can write comedy but can't perform worth a fuck. Mm. Like they can write some shit, but you put them right back in their mouth, they will fuck turn to shit. Seriously, mm -hmm. there's some well, motherfuckers that can let's perform. Let's talk about that real quick. Let, how 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 hard is the difference of writing a joke and then go up there and telling the joke? Man, writing writing is different for me, bro. Writing is one of my. I I, I I'm gonna have to find and make love with my muse because we, you know, I'm just saying. You gotta say for me, writing is is that is that like I need to like I will and I have. We'll be working hard on on perfecting the writing part. And some people are natural writers, bro. Mm -hmm. And just saying, but some and it it's amazing because some people just transfer that that thought to mm -hmm. paper. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And some it, it's so flawlessly, you know, that's that's the connection. And some people just have a thought to performance that a person that thought the paper can't do. There's mm -hmm. some people that can write that can never go on stage and just improv something and come off the cuff because they just get not not saying all of them, but there could be some, you know what I'm saying? And there's some people that you really that used to, you know, thought the performance. Have a hard time thought to write. Mm. It's a it's so many different. So everybody has a level of what they are, bro. And you have to find a way to to, to respect everybody's way and learn, bro. And and, and, perfect, and perfect your own way as well. Dope, dope. No, that's a great, great way to put that, my guy. Now let me ask you this, because you know we we at the midway point. So um, I just would like to know if you had a chance to pick your ultimate comedy show. Of course, you're gonna headline. Who will be on your show and why, my guy? Like, living in the dead, just living. Living in dead, living. Yo, you can. Oh, you can't. You can't you do want. that. All right, no. well, let's. I'm gonna make it challenging. Let's do living. You're living. Yeah, yeah, Whoever's yeah. living now, you can get four. All right, let's do three, three openers, and then you gonna close. So, who would you have, and and what order would you put them in? I, mean, I don't know. That's some scary shit. <laughs> uh, nah, because you know, I look at a lot of. I don't look at a lot of comedy like that because I, I, you know, comedy ideas are, are, you know, you end up not purposely trying to be on a premise, but you end up being in the same premise. You just watch four or five times. You studying a person. You feel me? That's that's how that comes out. But you know, right now, see, so right, right now, I was still, like, I would love to do a show. I'm, I'm gonna use these as one because you know, okay. give me all folk. I would love to do a show with 85 South. Mm. That's just, to, just, to, just, just, you know. Man, they young. They, they they know the game. They they have a lock on it. Chico Bing. I, I met Chico Bing when I first started doing comedy. I uh, did a show. Had a pleasure hosting the show. He was a part of in my hometown. And this, you know, what I'm saying so. You know, all that shit. Uh, still to this day, I still got to rock with Teacher the motherfucking K. 
uh, you know what I'm saying? Just, I've always just seen them, you know. Never forget one time, first time I saw them live, bro. I went to this mic the next night, and I fucking went, they went super sane because he just inspired me watching them live that night, bro, like before. Uh, teaching them up for okay. Uh, man. I got to throw me a lady. Got to. You got to. Who going who gonna, to who gonna set it off? Man, I love her. I got to have Lunel. That's that's. Mm. I got to have Angel mm. Lunel. I used to I used to have a crush on Lunel. I used to I used to, <laughs> yeah, I used to tell motherfuckers, hey, you? listen. I, I mean, I still love her, but I can't I can't let y'all know because somebody might trap me with Lunel. It was like it was like even she, so my my wife said, you know, I ain't got to worry about you fucking uh uh just hilarious. I don't worry about you fucking Lunel. Yeah, I sucked them old toes back in the day. Yeah, her old nasty. She the one. She used to have surprise. I ain't gonna lie, because her comedy used to be so raunchy. I just fell in love. Like, let me be a mosquito on that porch. You talking about, you know, <laughs> you know, this saying. But yeah, you had to be new nail. And, uh, yeah. you know, and then honestly, honestly, just, uh, it's a tough one to throw that last one out there, bro. I got, I got yeah. the four, four, three, two. I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, Rafi, uh, Ali Sadiq. I got to have Sadiq. Mm. Sadiq, Sadiq. Mm. It's okay. comedy. His his comedy has evolved to where he really he really talks about life and, and like not just no more just predatory subjects that we all can fire yeah and make it funny. Mm. So it's, it's, that's that's man that's it sounds like a hell of a time. I would have to I, I would have to I would have to I would have to work my ass off abundance and beyond and and I can't <laughs> give you an order because there's no with that much greatness man there's there's no one person that can sit it's not gonna be it's not gonna be elevation the whole time. Right. So you know you can never set an order or something like that. You just say, man, just ask them, who want to rock first? Shit, the motherfucker. One of the, I mean, that's what I ever do. Who gonna rock first? Because <laughs> they all get the same amount of time, you know. Because if you do that, I would call it a feature night, and I've seen it. Dave Chappelle, they all have between fifteen twenty minutes each. Mm -hmm. That's it mm -hmm. between him. Dog, you know what I'm saying? So you learn how to everybody have their time to shine, bro. And then then Dave came out eight for his own hour. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, I, man, that that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's dope. You got me my you blew me up on that, bro. Good job. Good job. No, nah, no, nah, that I wanted, I wanted to hear uh, you know what I mean, and who who would fit with your flow, who you think, you know what I mean, would be a nice vibe, nice time. But what advice would you give to somebody who is interested in getting into comedy? Because, you know, we see a lot of people doing skits online and, and I want to get your uh, opinion on that as well. So I'm it's a two part question. So the first part of the question, what would you, you know, what advice would you give somebody who just want to get into comedy? And then the second part is, what do you think about these online comedians and YouTube prankers and people like that? Uh, anything, find your local, find your local comedy scene, reach out to your local comedy scene, uh, go experience open mic. I mean, you know, you can tell jokes at home all day, people tell you funny, but go grab that mic. Uh, you know, people now get online and just do lives amongst themselves. Not saying nothing wrong with that, but you never get it's not like having live crowd reaction so you can learn. You can hear yourself talking, you can hear yourself working through, so you learn your tone, you learn how you're gonna speak. So, yeah, definitely hit an open mic, seek out your local uh, local community. If they ain't one, then create one, be the one to introduce it, and make something happen. Uh, other than that, you know, everybody got a lane to comedy now, bro. The world has changed. We no longer go out and do anything. Now everything's brought to our house, nigga. We can have we can have a pack of condoms delivered to the house. We ain't got to get up and go get there no more. Right. I can just sit here and say, you know what? I'm about to get some pussy. Let me do a damn some rubbers here real quick. I ain't got to go nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Hey, damn, they put it on for you. You give them a good tip. But the thing is, we is no longer we is no longer the time where people want to go out. So there's this lane of internet, lane of social is there, and and even. It, it, either some learn how to flourish on it, or some never fuck with it. it it's lame to us. You can't knock nobody. The prankers, <laughs> y'all niggas gonna get shot the fuck up. Y'all be for fucking around. I don't give a fuck how many followers you got. There's motherfuckers who don't know who you is. You will fuck around and get fucked up. I'm saying, I'm that one. I'm the one gonna choke your ass out. So you going viral again for me whooping your ass. You try to prank me. I don't give a fuck. Who, who, well, I got it. It's a prank, sir. Well, La la ha ha! It's a prank. Hit you in the mouth. It was a joke. Or hit you in the mouth. Ha ha ha! Anyway, yeah. So I don't knock nobody, bro. Do you? And uh, let's all learn how to impress. But I'm telling you, 
the microphone, the live mic is way different from any social presence or any internet you'll ever get. Because you you think something's great, you 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 before you get on live, you probably do your own live five times. I would do my live like this. When you touch that <laughs> mic in a moment, it ain't no I'm gonna do my live. It's it's I'm doing my live like this. So that's all. But everybody got lame, bro. Yeah. Okay, 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 man. Well, we've been cooking so far. Welcome. This is the Raw Talk Podcast. Well, Julio is talking that talk right now about this comedy world because, man, it's so many uh, comedians. Like you said, Jess Hilarious, B. Simone. It's a lot of people you see online and, you know, or they have their own podcast. And so do you think this is the best time to be a comedian, in your opinion? Uh, I'm honestly, hell no, nah, because we so goddamn soft. The Damn. world, the World's so soft, man. We'll we'll never we'll never have the living color no more, bro. I watched that. I watched the living color skit the other day when they had the men on film, bro. Men on football, bro. Right? This world too soft for that, bro. Like it just it's, it's just so offensive and oh, you're bashing. <laughs> like we just so soft now, man. No wonder no I mean, we so soft. People can give out green. They, they give out yellow cards in military training and say I need some emotional support. Because my drill sergeant taught me too rough. Do you know what's going to happen when the enemy catch your ass and waterboard you trying to get information? You're going to say, my colonel talked to me too rough. You better learn how to toughen the fuck up. <laughs> Damn. Seriously. So, no, nah, it, it, it's cool, but you you really got to find that line, man. Markability. Uh, do, are, are you worried about the, the, the council culture? Will you, will you push the envelope? Will you continue to, uh, to speak? your own truth for yourself and stand on that shit. I mean, a lot of things come with it, bro. It, you know, it might say, oh, oh, don't, don't express your view. I'm, I'm, you might not do what to do. I don't give a damn. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so, yeah. It's different. And uh, it's always a good time to express yourself. But I just feel like it's so much constraint and restrictions on truly being yourself out here nowadays before you make it big or you have to make it big before you can be this next person. Uh, some people go through, you know, grooming, and then they then they finally blossom in their own self. You know what I'm saying? So it just it just depends, bro. But yeah, it's tough right now. You really you gotta be careful. A lot, a lot of hurt souls out here. That's a who fact. hurt you? Yeah. Cancel curse. Who hurt you? Culture is at yeah. an all time high right now. Cancel. They I can't, they, they smoke. They smoke. They, they smoke Zaza and the Zaza King. That's how they <laughs> <is>. <laughs> that's, <laughs> nah, that's a fact. That's they a so fact. they so ready, man. So all right. Yeah. Man. I want that that just sparked another question of mine because we know how sensitive um, people are, different things. Do you think that comedy is going to be in trouble, or do you think comedy is going to have to adjust with the times? Because it seems like if people can't take the joke, where does that leave comedy? Uh, it's still going to be it's still going to be pushers of the art. It's still going to put people pushing the norm. It's just gonna be like, are you or will you conform to it, or will you continue to be, you know, voice your own mind, bro? It's it's, it's gonna feel be, they can't cancel you, if, you know. It, if that's the case, nigga, let's move to China and 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 then let's not be able to talk about government. Let's not be able to have all, you know, what I'm saying if that if that's what they're doing, they're doing this this shit, and they try to say is um, let me go, don't get me started because I start doing anarchy, anarchy. <laughs> <But> anyway. <laughs> No, I'm just saying if that's the case, then we can't even express that we might as well go into a communist motherfucking society. And that's what the culture's really is fortunate is a common society where not even on social media, I can't even push, I'll whoop your ass. Oh, that goes against community standards. But I can say, uh, you know, I can say something very stupid like for let me go fuck some, you know, some adolescent wah wah wah. Oh, that's fine with our guidelines. Well, I can post somebody getting their brains blown out, but if I say something about what well, they're, we are, we are right now in the midst of, of a, a communist control that we think we have freedom to. People don't want to even admit to it. Yeah, so yeah, you got to be very careful what you say, what you type, what you <laughs> message, <laughs> what you put out there, because people will go back 10 years on yeah, you on the yeah, tweet that you had. Fuck out of here, man. And by yo, you said this. Yeah, you said. You. Yeah, man, the fuck, man, cancel these nuts. Why well, tell them take that back to ten years ago, twenty when he first that first came out. Jeez, yeah, I'm just saying, bros. It's a shame, bro. That's and then the people who deserve to get canceled, 
they never get canceled, bro. They still continue to do what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to be taboo. You know, let me stop. Okay, let's go somewhere. <laughs> you have me fucking. You gonna have me doing? You gonna have me doing Doctor Feeling in a minute? What yeah. school of hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about what you got going on now because we're getting close to the end. Uh, tell us what you have going on now. And also, what let's talk about your 2B and everything else you got going, my G. Let the people know what you got going on. All right, well, first of all, I, I, I go backwards. I go for the past to the future. Uh, yes, I have a couple things out here. Out here in, in, um, for real, keep it 100. As long as your kid wants to speak it. That, that's right. That's right. Uh, I do have a special on Amazon Prime. It's under the title Liquor House Comedy Five. Liquor House Comedy is a is a production team that puts on you know, great comedians from the local area and out abroad. Um, I'm a part of three comedians on that. Um, that's on Amazon Prime. Then my first uh, individual comedy special, uh, Call the Law, is on Tubi TV. Uh, it's my first comedy special shot during the pandemic. Uh, for real, we all were wearing masks. I had it. You know, it was a, it was a sold out night. Um, I'm thankful for it, bro. You know, it, it couldn't have been no better. Um, you know, to be honest with you. Um, let's see. Um, after that, I got something going on uh, very soon. Uh, November, uh, I got something going on locally with a great thing called Friday at the next local, local production. It's another comedy show, but I'm excited to pronounce that December the 17th on my birthday weekend, uh, we'll be in Chicago at Riddles Comedy Club for Hennessy on the Rocks. That's my production. I put on down here for many years. It's the birthday show. I'm hosting it. I got the awesome national touring. Jake Staley going to be the headliner. Bobby Wright from Chicago. My homegirl, Stephanie Funny from Greensboro. She's a fucking fool. And your boy hosting it at the fucking A-Miss Riddles Comedy Club in Chicago, Illinois. So, man, that, and that's produced by me, put on by me. And, uh, boy, that's one. And I, I'm, I'm happy to, to stunt that right now. I need that. I need to sell out because uh, I, we're trying to shine, baby. Hello, hello, man. Let y'all yeah. in the shot down area pull up, pull up, pull up. Go get them tickets, sell that drink out, my guy. Now, yeah, we now, 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 let's talk about this real quick before we before we get up out of here. How do you have you had a heckler at any of your shows? And if you have, how did you handle that? Because I know me as a you know, early comedian, that's just something that I know that could possibly happen. And but I definitely want to hear your side of, you know, how did you handle that? It ain't, it ain't never happened often. But when it did, boy, she it, it, yeah. I and I, and I was a female too. Don't be a nigga fucking with me, be the females. Whoa. They say something real, yeah. And then uh so I roast her out of <laughs> man, one time she so bad man, she told me don't do her like that. Leave her alone. <laughs> I said she fucked with me. <laughs> Hold on, I'm just doing my thing. They're trying to tell you to chill on after you mess with these birds. Chill, she said, chill. You doing too much? Nice, you fuck with me. <laughs> I'm gonna give you what you want now, <laughs> bro. I believe that. Listen, I don't roast people. Hey, helper. I believe you come to show to be entertained, not be made entertainment. Mm -hmm. Don't bother me. I ain't gonna bother you. Right. That's it. Mm. And um, I never forget. It was a show in Augusta, Georgia. She was roasting the host. He was real fat and slovenly. He was a big guy. He didn't have his clothes on right. But that's the host. Like, chill out. And she kept talking about how fat and sloppy he was and shit like that. Out loud, like, I got the mic. And she kept on going in. So I got to defend my host. And I went on her. And I gave her the, you know, there's always a certain type of female you need to watch out for. You know, you go to, like, you know, she type, you type, I said, you type, that type of female you go to the house, always check the sink and see if you got any dirty dishes with water filled up in that motherfucker. Dirty, the sink full of dirty water dishes. Smell like little piss and shit. That's, that's that kind of bitch. You know what I'm saying? You ever go to a female house and you go in the bathroom and there's some crusty, hard, uh, castor plaster, uh, wash rags hanging up on the shower curtain. I was like, yeah, that's that kind of bitch. I said, mm. yeah, go. I was like, yeah, go over girl, girl. I said, man, please check her dirty clothes apple. because she got plastic on her drawers. That's that kind of dirty. Oh. I went in, bro. I went in. No, yeah, I went in. Damn. Yeah, that's how I go. I, you we gonna fight? I told you. I, I I don't I don't play nice. I don't play nice. Damn it. I told I had one dude, and I think I think I I, I was too smart for him. 
I said so. I said, man, you missing the chromosome, and he didn't understand. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I said, said bro, you definitely missing the chromosome. Man. So, and then the Eric, man, he didn't want to know what you huh? What's the chromosome? You know, the educated ignorance, bro. The educated oh, ignorance. Oh my God! All right, man. Well, Julio, we. Been <laughs> I already knew. You're going to use that, ain't you? You're going to use that, ain't you? You're going to tell the nigga, you missing the chromosome. You fucked up on the molecular level, my guy. Yeah, yeah, my guy. You're still fucked up from the beginning. You a whole different evolutionary. You 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 crow magnet man with the protruding eyebrows and shit. Got the real big forehead. They were dragging his knuckles and shit. Now, who is that man? See, that's already knew you cutting up. Now, Julio, yeah, that's man, any good. last words to the people? Uh, and then also let them know where they can find you on your socials and everything like yeah. that before we get up out of here. Uh, I always say this, man, uh, since I've been doing this journey, man. Um, I, I encourage people, people when, you, when you start to follow your dream or you start to push what you believe is meant for you, make, make sure you're doing it because that's what you believe in. If you're out here, here looking for if you're out here looking for pats on your back, if you're out here looking for everybody to support you and run with you for you to continue pushing. If all you say, well, y'all ain't never come to see me and fuck with me, so I don't want to do this no more. And this is not meant it's not meant for you to be doing. Because at the end, at the end of the day, man, everybody ain't gonna see what you see for yourself. Hello. And you gotta push when no one else will. So I encourage people, man, go for your dream, go for the fullest. Don't do it because you're looking for someone to tell you you're doing good. Do it because you believe that's what you're gonna be doing. That's gonna that's your blessing. Uh, that man, laugh. Stop being so stuck up. Get the stick out your ass. Literally, I don't care how they feel about that one. Learn laugh more. Life too short. Cause if you ain't laughing, you ain't living. And please, if you laugh more, you live longer. Uh, Net, follow me on, on Instagram, the real Julio Hennessy. Uh, who, uh, Catch the Funny on Facebook is is is, is my business page. Catch the Funny because that's my brand. It's catch the Funny. I'm gonna throw it out there. You gotta catch it, baby. That's all there to it. Um, that man, you know, I appreciate the support. Thank you, Rothstein. Y'all know Rothstein, so get him support, man. He he, hey, he get nominated going to BET Award and shit. This motherfucker's out here. Y'all don't know behind his. This boy is doing something. Y'all don't see it, but I know about it. And we gotta get this man flower too. You know what I'm saying? God damn it! This, uh, listen, with because I'm telling you what happened when he get when he get his award nomination. I'm flying out there with him. I'm gonna be on the red carpet, bitch. And I'm gonna be like saying, "Roasty, you feel me? I'm gonna I'm gonna do a whole that damn telling you something. Now, thank you, brother. I'm gonna speak in existence, bro. Keep keep rocking. Y'all don't know. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't know the works he done done with people. Just just go out there and check his little uh check with the stat sheets. It, it is lined up, motherfucker. Tell him that better check for the check my motherfucker stat sheet. That way it is, nigga. I'm gonna start five, start five, nigga. Yeah, that's popping my shit, goddamn it. My guy got me gassed up now. Yeah, sir, bro. Nah, bro, I ain't gassed up. Like I said, you gotta you gotta believe in yourself, bro. You need people that believe in you. Like you believe in them, bro. And when you find those people, hang on to them. You know, bless them. I'm telling y'all, man, it, it, you get you, you think you're shining by yourself, but bro, when you work together, them two candles make a bigger flame than your one. Hello, man. You you cooking, goddamn. You cooking right now, Julio. You cooking right now. And somebody gonna get that. If somebody on YouTube, somebody on here, somebody gonna catch with you throwing paws. And you really like you said, <laughs> that's the funny. <laughs> I'm glad we. Happened. I'm glad that that was that that was that camera on and, yeah, and, and yeah, camera yeah. on and Mace moment. Yeah. Pause. Oh, he he said he's gonna catch that, bro. I was like, yo, B, <laughs> yo, <laughs> really. Hey yo, hey yo, you wild for that? So that's like, hey yo, you wild for that, B? You wild for that? So what he's throwing at him? What he what he throwing at him, B? <laughs> Well, man, this has been another dope edition of the Raw Talk Podcast where we talk that talk. Today, we have met with the very funny, hilarious comedian, Julio Hennessy. So make sure y'all follow my guy at The Real Julio Hennessy. Make sure y'all following me. I am Rothstein Beats, also at Raw Talk Podcast, man. 
So Julio, one last, any last word? We got one last, we got time for one more crazy thing to say. You can say one more last word. One more crazy. Yeah. Just. Well, this, this is my oldie. And, and, and I don't care. I think, I think you know this one. But now nah, I'm going to talk about something else fresh real quick. You ain't heard yet, bro. I want to tell people that, hey, I'm tired of fat people picking on other fat people. Like, I got a friend that's bigger than me, but he think he that I'm bigger than him. And I'm like, bro, we got to an argument about it. And I was like, you want to compare? He's like, man, I, I know I know you big as me. I said, bro, no, I'm not. He said, how are you going to tell me? I said, show me your wrist. Mm. So I pulled my wrist out. You see bone. You see the veins and shit, all that working right. He pulled his wrist out. All I saw was hamburger meat. That's all I saw. I ain't seen no vein. All I saw was like a grapefruit wrist. You know what I'm saying? I told him, Ray Charles met you, he'll call you fat. <laughs> so, so, so we get to a little tussle because, you know, he mad and shit. And, we, you know, we kind of break some shit at the club. And we can't pay for it. So we're going to have to call the police. So now we outside, about to go to jail. We in handcuffs. He going to tell me, I, it's your fat ass fault we ain't here because, nigga, you still fatter than me. I said, nah, bro, you the fattest, bro. He said, how I'm fatter? I said, because I'm wearing one pair of handcuffs. You wearing four. <laughs> Damn it, man. Don't be out there cooking fat people, man. Don't be out there cooking all I'm fat, fat too. Uh, uh, like, I got shit. I, 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 I got sleep apnea, bitch. I use a whole machine to go to sleep at night. I'm fat too, man. Fuck <laughs> Now, I ain't safe. Like, safe. <laughs> Damn it, man. Damn it. I'm about to get to my next event, though. I'm going to my next event. I know you uh, go, my guy. But listen, if you uh, want to get more funny laughter, go check Julio out on Tubi. And please, all man. It's free on Tubi. And I'm calling for two ninety nine dollars and a two ninety nine dollars on Amazon. Y'all spend that shit on fucking hot Cheetos. Hello. Yeah. Stop buying Hello. a bag of hot Cheetos and go support my guy. God damn it. It's one, so, one bag. It's like one, one bag. Well, same price as one bag. And then that bitch say two twenty nine on that bitch. <laughs> Just, go ahead, <laughs> Just go ahead, goddamn. Just go ahead and get them. <laughs> Just go ahead and get them with the tax. Goddamn, stop eating. Yeah, you can go ahead and get that, man. And you can go support my guy, man. And then also, yes, sir. one more time about Chicago before we go. Before Chicago, go. December 17th at the Riddles Comedy Club in Alcip, Illinois. It is Hennessy on the Rock Chicago edition. It's my birthday show. I am hosting. I got the national touring motherfucking Jake Staley out of Mount Columbia, South Carolina. I got the hilarious Bobby Wright. I call him Shook Knight of Chicago. I got my homegirl Stephanie Funny because she is too fucking funny from Greensboro. And your man right here, who yo, I'm hosting that home over all night. It's able twenty five dollars, two drink minimum. I swear to God, it's gonna be the funniest show you ever had, man. I know it's cold on the seventeenth, but Chicago, I know y'all ready. Pull up and bring me a motherfucking large rib tip from limbs. If somebody bring me a large tip from limbs, the ticket is on me, nigga. Mm. This place you can put extra mild sauce in that motherfucker. My fat ass needs some limbs, and I'm scared because it's a bad neighborhood, and they be doing drive-bys. I ain't dying for barbecue. But you bring that damn large little rib tip, you get for free. How about that? <laughs> Amen. Hello, hello, man. <laughs> You heard what he said. You're going to get in the show. You're going to be good to get in the show. Yeah, in, so, in, inbox me, so I know I don't want, I don't want third niggas bringing rib tips. <laughs> and I got to let third niggas in free. I got like 40 pounds of rib tips. And I can't eat it one night. So y'all going to have to inbox me first. Say, like, gonna, yeah. Don't tell everybody you're going to come in and dig it. They just bring you the ribs. So they going to be in there. Um, they going to be in there like, y'all thought you were real. Like, like, we, we brought you there. Hell, you got 30 motherfuckers that paid no ticket. Trying to get niggas. I ain't got real. No, nah, no. Nah. Somebody inbox me first. I'm like, it got me. Show me a receipt night of the show. I got your real shit. Okay, you in. All right. Hey, man. Bring them motherfuckers with extra brown sauce. That's yes, sir. Extra brown sauce. Thank you again, Julio, for pulling up, man. And hey, thank you, you bro. Another show, my guy. But, man, we about to get up out of here. So, y'all, listen. This has been another edition of the Rock Talk, Roth Talk Podcast where we talk that talk. And this episode will be on YouTube, so make sure you go check out all the other episodes I got. And then we about to get up out of here. So, man, y'all be blessed. I holla at y'all in these streets, and y'all be safe, man. Peace. Peace.